Hey y'all, if you're new here, my name's Victoria and our channel is called Super Geeked. So what does Super Geeked mean? Super Geeked is a channel that me and my best friends created to celebrate all the things we get super geeked about, but also to celebrate all the people around us and the things that they get super geeked about. Too often we point out each other's differences and use it for divisive nature. And what we wanted to do was turn that around and celebrate our differences. So it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what you're into. We just want to take and make this channel about celebrating you and celebrating all the amazing gifts you have and all the things that make you who you are. And we hope that every time you come to our channel that it's exciting, it's new, it's fun. So part of who I am and also Gayla, one of the other partners here at Super Geeked, is that we are full-time sellers on the Poshmark app. So what does that mean? What that means is Gayla and I go out, we go thrifting, we go sourcing at retail stores that have discounted items, we go to buy sell trade stores, we take items that are gifted to us from family and friends, and we list those items on the Poshmark app to sell for a profit. So the reason I'm making this video today is because I have exciting news. My first long-term goal for becoming a full-time Poshmark seller was to beat $10,000 in sales. And I just surpassed that goal. I have only been a full-time seller for just a few months. So to give you a little background about me, I am not new to the online marketplace. I am not new to reselling or selling online. Back in the late 90s when eBay launched and I was just a high schooler, I used to sell on the eBay app. Then Etsy launched and when Etsy launched, it was a great way for people like me who are creatives, who are artists, who are makers, to be able to get their wares out in the world. Another thing that's a big part of my life is mid-century modern. So 1945 to 1965, that post-World War II era. I'm a big collector of all things mid-century modern, whether it's furniture, glassware, tableware, decorative items, whatever it may be. And so eBay and Etsy were a good way for me to be able to purchase and flip items to sell. And then I would have extra income to be able to cycle through the old things I didn't want anymore and buy new cool mid-century modern pieces for my home. And so it was another uh, way, another outlet for me. I've always enjoyed reselling. I've always enjoyed selling online, but during certain phases of my life, I didn't have time for it. Then recently I found Poshmark. Really it was through my friend Gayla. She had been a Poshmark seller for about a year and she recommended that I try to start selling some of my personal items, my personal clothing on Poshmark. I had been for a long time giving away a lot of my old clothes. I'm a shopper, I, I'm not afraid to admit it. And when we had a lot more disposable income, I often would buy things that would end up sitting in my closet, new with tags, never touched or worn, pretty embarrassing. But I would end up giving all of those items away. And Gayla encouraged me to try and get some of these items and sell them on Poshmark. And because of that, I found a new outlet that offered me an opportunity to be able to stay home and be there for my children, but also provide an income to my household. So over the months that I've been an online reseller, things have changed. I have evolved in how I source, in how I run my business, and I'm still working out the kinks. I'm still figuring out where I really fit into everything. But being able to break that first long-term goal of $10,000 was so exciting that it has really given me the push to see where can I go next. I also want to stress that the greatest thing about Poshmark is that you can run your business however you want. The way that I run my business is totally different from the way that Gayla runs her business. There are other resellers out there that do their business totally different than the way I do it. And they are still successful. You don't have to be like everybody else. You can forge your own road. You can decide how you want your store to be, how you want your closet to look, what sort of items you want to source. It's all up to you. You decide. 
In the beginning, I found that I was buying a lot of items based on what other resellers were able to sell. And the truth is, and you'll hear this a lot, what sells for one person does not sell for another. And boy, you find that out real quick when you become a reseller, because I still have items sitting in my closet that have been sitting there since day one that have not moved. Don't feel like you have to do everything that a reseller is telling you that they do. The people that become your customer base are going to be coming back for you, not because of what that reseller next to you is doing. So do this your way. If I can do this, somebody who had a little experience of online marketplace selling, but never as a full-time job, can tell you that you can do this. You can do this. You can. I believe in you. I want you to be successful. I think we can all do this. In celebration of me making $10,000 in sales, I thought I would make a video that I haven't made yet. And that is a what sold video. So in this video, this is going to be part one, and I'm going to show you what I sold from October 1st to October 15th of this year. Then I'll do a second part where I'll do the last half of October. So you can see that too. So you'll be able to see what my customer paid for the item, how much I sourced it for, what the Poshmark fees were, and then what I made on the item. So if that's something it sounds like you will want to see, stick around. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Even if you only want to watch the reselling content, that's cool. We have a playlist for that. So you can go through that playlist and only watch the reselling content. If you're interested in checking out anything else we have on this channel, I encourage you to check out our vinyl challenges, to check out Gala's toy collecting videos, and to just check out who we are as people because we are so much more than just resellers, even though the reselling stuff's really exciting too. So thanks for watching. Um, thank you for supporting us. We appreciate it so much. And remember, you can do this too. Okay, so the first item that sold in October was this anthropology portrait of a girl dress. Actually, this dress had been altered. There was a cinched waist in the middle. Here's a, a picture of what it looked like originally. Um, I didn't think it distracted from the dress too much, but I did note that in the listing and someone still purchased it. Uh, they purchased it for $30. This actually was um, found by Gala when we were out thrifting together. Um, Poshmark took $6 in fees and my cost of goods was $6.99. So I made $17.01 on this purchase. And my buyer did uh, leave a sweet love note. So the next item that sold was one of those mod cloth retail arbitrage um, items. I have purchased a lot of mod cloth and resold it. This was a new without tags blue A-line dress. It had a cute little belt in the middle and my customer that bought it actually got it for her daughter for homecoming and she did leave me a sweet love note um, about how much her daughter loved the dress. I sold this dress for $60. Poshmark took $12 in fees and I paid $10 for the dress. So my total profit on this mod cloth dress was $38. The next item that sold was this 80s tracksuit. It um, was in this color block pattern, sort of um, darker fall colors. Gala is the one I've mentioned in previous videos that really pushed me to pick up tracksuits when I see them. There is a market for them. There are people who are looking specifically for these tracksuits and a lot of times they do pay up for them. Was not sure about this tracksuit because of the colors. A lot of the ones I pick up are bright colors or pastels because that's what was big in the 80s and 90s. Um, but actually I ended up selling this one for $30 with Poshmark taking $6 in fees and I paid $6.99 for the tracksuit. And um, so that means I made $17.01 on this sale and my um, buyer did leave me a love note. Next dress I had is a mod cloth dress. Again, it was purchased retail arbitrage. It was this dinosaur dress. I really thought that there was going to be a market for this. I know dinosaurs uh, were really popular, sort of like a kitschy um, motif, but <clears throat> unfortunately this dress sat for a while. A lot of the mod cloth stuff I bought around the same time flew off the shelves or sold within the month. And this one actually sat for several months. So 
I don't know that I would pick this dress up again. Um, it is 100% polyester. It is lightweight. It doesn't have the, um, you know, the shape, the, you know, effort put into it that a lot of the mod cloth dresses have. So I probably would not pick this one up again. Um, but it did end up selling on October 5th for $42. Poshmark took $8.40 and I actually paid $20 for this dress. So my profit was only $13.60. So again, I probably would not pick this dress up again. The next item is another item that when I was outsourcing with Gayla, she found it's a vintage oversized kimono blazer. It's uh, probably late 80s, late 80s, early 90s, and it had columns on it and triangles and these sort of like watercolor wash on it. It was really cool. Um, so I was happy to see it go to a good home. It was um, purchased for $35. Poshmark took $7, <clears throat> excuse me, $7, and my cost of goods was $4.99. So I made a profit of $23.01. Next up is this vintage uh, Pretty in Pink 80s prom dress. Um, it had this big um, shoulder. So it was like a lattice with uh, some beading on it and a little bit of sequins. And then it looked like it was a top and a skirt. It was separate, but it actually wasn't. And it had a giant detachable bow in the back, which I think really made the dress. And it was this really pretty pale pink. Um, and the taffeta that it was made out of was sort of like this wood grain texture. It was really interesting, but I sold that dress for $25. My, um, cost of goods was $5 and 39 cents and Poshmark took $5. So I made $14 and 61 cents off the sale of this dress. And I do like to pick up vintage. Um, I get really excited about vintage pieces because they're often unique and, you know, sometimes they're super hard to find or one of a kind in some instances. So, you know, I really enjoy picking up vintage and you'll see that a lot of the newer items that I pick up are vintage inspired because that is just what I'm into. That's my aesthetic at home. And so it, it relates over to my closet. So the next item that sold was another mod cloth. You'll see that it doesn't have a lot of information on the sale and that's because I relisted it for this customer. This customer um, was saving up to purchase the skirt. So a lot of people on Poshmark are not full-time sellers, but what they do is they sell items from their closet. And then when they have enough money saved in, in the Poshmark app, because you don't have to right away deposit it into your bank, it isn't automatic and it'll just sit there. So there are people that will accumulate a balance in their Poshmark and then once they've got enough, they'll go out and purchase an item. So that was the case with my customer on this item. She really wanted the skirt. She had saved up her Poshmark money and she, um, I had sent out an offer several weeks ago and she messaged me and asked me if I'd be willing to do that offer again for her. And because I had already made the offer to her, it wouldn't let me do it again. So I um, relisted the item for her at a reserve and she purchased that um, skirt for $40. Um, and then I paid $12 for the skirt. Poshmark took $8 and so I made $20 on the skirt and she did leave me a sweet love note. The next item that sold in October was these pinup couture uh, wingtips. They were the flapper Mary Jane pumps. And they were practically new, um, but I found them at the thrift store. My customer bought them for $30. They were super cute. A Poshmark took $6 and my cost of goods was $6.99. So my profit was $17.01. The next item that sold was this Disney Princess Little Mermaid canvas wall hanging. Um, I purchased this in the beginning of my reselling journey. They were marked way down at Hobby Lobby. And I thought, well, I'll just try it. A lot of people like Disney. So um, I don't think that I would pick that up today. It was just a kind of try and see. And you'll find when you first start working through Poshmark and figuring out how to how you're going to run your closet that you'll do a lot of trial and error. And that was one of these items that I purchased just to see what would happen. And I did make a profit on it, but probably wouldn't pick it up now. Uh, it wouldn't really go with my aesthetic in my closet. 
So I sold this for $18. I had paid $3 for it and Poshmark took $3.60. And so I made um, $11.40. I did have a cancellation in between here where a customer purchased some Hudson jeans for me and then decided she didn't want to get them. Um, and she messaged me and asked me if I would cancel them. She actually started to ask me a bunch of questions about the item after she purchased it, which for me seems like a bit of a red flag um, and often could mean that the person is going to end up opening a case against you for a return. So I was quick to answer her questions and she asked me to cancel the order. And so I did. Um, but just to tell you that sometimes there are situations where people buy something without reading and then end up regretting it. So if you can cancel the order, it's probably in your best interest to go ahead and cancel it before you ship it out because then you're going to end up risking having a case open because that buyer is not happy. So the next thing that sold on October 8th were these Clark's Artisan Festival patent leather flats. And Clark's do really well. The comps on these shoes were um, great. There were some $75 sales on them, um, even used. So I was really excited um, to pick these up. I sort of got middle of the road price on this. I, I sold these for $40, which is fine with me because I only paid $6.99 for them. And Poshmark took $8. So I did make $25.01 on this sale. Again, another mod cloth. This is a new without tags, red and black pleated dress. I just noticed I misspelled right here, black. So um, I sold several of this dress. This was the last one that I had and I ended up selling it for $35, which was fine for me because this is one of the dresses that I had purchased that I only paid $10 for. Um, and then Poshmark took $7, so I made $18 on this sale. The next thing that sold on October 8th were these White House Black Market embellished bootcut jeans. Uh, they were a bit of an older style, but I tend to do really well with White House Black Market. Some people will tell you they can't sell it. And I have other brands that people rave about and say that they can sell that I can't get to move at all. So, But White House Black Market is a bread and butter brand for my closet. And so I was able to sell these and even though they were an older style, I sold them for $19. Poshmark took $3.80. I gave a shipping debt discount of $1.80 and I paid 99 cents for these jeans. So my profit was $12.41 for that sale. So moving over to October 9th, my first sale was this uh, mod cloth mauve rose floral a-line dress and it was a really pretty dress but it was sort of like muted colors um and i sold it for 45 dollars poshmark took nine and my cost of goods was ten dollars so i made 26 dollars on the sale again on the ninth i sold this silk joie uh, dress it was sort of like a, a mini dress and it was sheer uh, really cute, but you know, didn't have a lot of consistency to it. So it wasn't very he a heavyweight dress and it actually sat for a while. I was a little surprised because um, it has this cute like houndstooth pattern, but I sold this dress for $18. Poshmark took $3.60 and my cost of goods was $3.45. So I made $10.95 on this dress. Probably wouldn't pick it up again. Next up are these, um, Lux denim sailor high waisted uh, wide leg trousers. They were uh, like a jean trouser with this button front. It was totally looked like sailor pants. They were really cute. So I sold these for $28. Um, Poshmark took $5.60. I gave a shipping discount of $1.80 and my cost of goods was $3.50. So I made $17.10 on this sale. Next on the 9th was this mod cloth wine and lace dress. I purchased several of these um, in different sizes. This one sold for $50. Poshmark took 10 and I paid 10 for the dress. So I made $30 on the sale. The next sale on the 9th was again another mod cloth. This dress is probably the best quality mod cloth dress I have seen so far. It was made of this organic cotton. It's made in the UK by a brand called Palava. And actually, Mod Cloth has uh, 
carried a couple of their dresses and I've sold I sold another one that was this hunter green color with deer on it that was really pretty I unfortunately only found that in one size but this dress I got in several sizes I think I've I wish I would have found it in my size because I would have certainly kept this I mean it's beautiful so I sold this dress for a hundred dollars Poshmark took 20 and I gave a dollar 80 shipping discount and my cost of goods was twenty dollars so um, my total profit on this dress was $58.20, and I was left a love note on that dress. The last item that sold on the 9th was this um, boutique brand off-the-shoulder oversized striped top. It was like a comfy top, and um, I picked this up at the thrift store. It was $25 that the customer purchased it for. Poshmark took five. I gave a $1.80 shipping discount. And um, I paid $3.99 for this top, so I made $14.21. I loved this. So this was my one and only sale on October 10th. This was a matching shirt and top set. So they were very popular in the late 80s and early 90s. It had shoulder pads. It had this crazy pattern all over it and totally reminded me of Eleven from Stranger Things. If you haven't seen the new season of Stranger Things, Eleven goes through a transformation, or L as anybody who really likes that kitschy style from the late 80s, early 90s. And so um, this I sold for $25, Poshmark took five, and I paid $3.99 for it, so I made $16.01 on the sale. Next up on, was my first sale on October 11th. My grandmother actually gave me this jacket, believe it or not. And so I didn't pay anything for this jacket. Um, it's a quilted black vegan leather moto jacket. It had this really cool silver hardware all over it. Um, and I was able to sell it for $27. Poshmark took $5.40. And again, I got this for free. So my total profit was $21.60. The next item that sold on October 11th was this 80s metallic lame and taffeta prom dress. It was really cool. The lame had this pleating on the bodice that went down into a V in the front. And then the taffeta was this big poofy taffeta that had actually sewn in to the taffeta some tools. So it gave this puffy look, totally reminiscent of the 80s. Um, this dress was sold for $68. And Poshmark took $13.60. I gave a $1.80 shipping discount. And my cost of goods was $6.99. So on this dress, I made $45.61. The next item that sold in October were these classic boot cut soft and stretchy Levi's. Now, this was one of the first items I purchased when I started my reselling journey, and I have to say I would not pick them up again. They sat for a long time. Um, some Levi's sell, but they're mostly the vintage Levi's, and I've had really good luck with the vintage, but these were a newer style, um, and again, they sat for a while. So I was able to sell them for $12. Poshmark took $2.95. I gave a $1.80 shipping discount, and my cost of goods was $0.99. Cents. So I did make $6.26 off this sale, but again, something I wouldn't pick up now. The next item that sold was something from our house. This was uh, my son's shirt. He only wore it a couple of times, but it was um, a really nice Ralph Lauren polo toddler button-up shirt, and I sold it for $10. Poshmark took $2.95. I gave a $1.80 shipping discount, and since we didn't pay anything for it, my total profit on this item was $5.25. The next item that sold was a bundle. I actually used to work at the Victoria's Secret catalog in the early 2000s, and that is around the time that pink was started. So I actually found this light safe uh, clothing case that was at the top of my closet I totally forgot about, and it was full of brand new items that I purchased when I worked at the Victoria's Secret catalog and just never wore. So in this lot was a t-shirt and panty set that had a blow dryer on it. It actually said blow dry on the front. It was really kitschy, really cute. And then two little pink tank tops. Uh, one had a ruffle that looked sort of like a tuxedo ruffle on the front and the other one had some floral embellishments. 
And then the last item was a vintage Victoria's Secret mini skirt, and it had these neon stripes all over it. So I sold that bundle for $38. Poshmark took $7.60. And again, I didn't pay anything for it. It was just some items I had. So I made $30.40 on that sale. And my customer did leave me a sweet love note. The next item that sold in October was on the 15th, and it was another one of those mod cloth uh, retail arbitrage items that I purchased. I have to say, I probably would not pick this up now. Um, usually if I'm picking up tops or skirts, even if they're mod cloth, which is a staple in my closet, I usually pick up things that are really different and not run of the mill, not something you'd see in another store. And so this was just a little, cute tank top. It had little daisies all over it. It had a peplum bottom and a few buttons on the front. I mean, it was a really cute top, but I just don't think it was special enough. And so I did sell it for $21. Poshmark took $4.20 and I had paid $7 for this item. So I made $9.80 on this sale. The last item that uh, sold in the first half of October was on October 15th. It was a new with tags mod cloth dress. It's a cocktail dress and it's made by a brand called Chi Chi London that mod cloth carries a lot. I actually have this dress in several different colors. Um, I've sold a bunch and I still have a bunch left in my closet, but this was the only one I had of this really pretty lavender color. So I sold this dress for $81, Poshmark took $16.20, and I paid $20 for the item, so I made a profit of $44.80. And I do have this dress left in black. I have a long version of it that's a wedding gown that's all white. I have it in a wine burgundy color, and then I also have it in a teal with white lace. So a lot of options, um, and it's a really well-made, pretty dress. So that was all my sales for the beginning of October. The total amount that I made after Poshmark fees and shipping discounts and my cost of goods was $563.26. Now, that's a little lower than I normally average, but... I had gone on two months of pretty low sales, um, and so things have just started to pick back up at this point in October, and so I'm pretty happy with my sales um, being at um, a little over $550. I think that's good and on target for where I need to be right now. So overall, it's been a good first half of the month, and I look forward to making the second half of the month to show you what I did in the latter part of October.